This lesson deals with analyzing circuits with a floating voltage source without a series resistance. You can find these notes in the ECE201 ebook in Chapter 3 starting on page 24. In our previous lessons we looked at techniques for solving for node voltages. One technique involved having only current sources and only resistances. Then we looked at the case of a voltage source added to our circuit but with a series resistance and we did a source transformation to convert it to a current source. And then the last case is having a voltage source without a series resistance and what we tried to do in solving those problems was to pick one of the nodes of the voltage source as a reference. But suppose you have more voltage sources and you can't do that. Here's an example, let's take a look at how to solve this one. Here I've got two voltage sources, 9 volts and 3 volts, and I've picked this node as the reference node, and so I now know node voltage B is 3 volts. So I still have two unknown node voltages here, V sub A and V sub C. Let's take a look at trying to solve for those two. Now I also have a constraint between nodes A and C and that node voltage A minus node voltage C is equal to 9 volts. I have one equation of my two unknowns, V sub A and V sub C. So I need one more equation, but the rest of my nodes have a voltage source hooked up to it. What I'm going to have to do is to assign a current in one or both of my voltage sources and then solve for that as an additional unknown. Pick the current in the 9 volt source. I'm going to call that I1. And it's labeled on the following page. Besides the unknown node voltages A and C, I now have an unknown current. I'll call it I1. Let's sum the currents at node A. I've assigned the current I1 leaving the node. I'm going to make the other currents enter the node so I can put I1 on one side of the equation. So I1 is going to be equal to this current plus this current, and this is going to be this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by 1,000 or times 1 milli. And then the current in this direction is going to be 0 minus V sub A divided by 1 half of a K or then times 2 milli. Let's group together all the things that multiply V sub A and then actually a constant here. So I've got a minus 1 milli times V sub A and then a minus 2, so I got minus 3 milli times V sub A and then I've got also a constant of 3 times 1 milli. Let me sum the currents here. I've got the current I1 entering and I'll make these two leave so I can put I1 again on the other side of the equation. And I'm going to just set these two equal to each other to get rid of I1. The current going in this direction is going to be V sub C minus 3 divided by half a K or times 2 milli. And then the current in here is just simply V sub C divided by half a K or times 2 milli. Then again, let me group together all the things that multiply V sub C here. And I've got 2 milli, and I've got another 2 milli, so that's 4. And I've got a minus 6 millis as a constant. Now if I just equate these two, I can get rid of the unknown I1. I'll take the first equation and set it equal to the second equation. And let's put our unknowns V sub A and V sub C on one side of the equation. So I'll bring the minus 3 milli times V sub A over to here, and that's this term. I got 4 milli here times V sub C, and I'll bring this 6 milli on this side is 9 milli. So I've got that 9 milliamps is equal to 3 milli moles times V sub A plus 4 milli moles times V sub C. So I could write a matrix entry with V sub A and V sub C. But I also have that 9 volts is equal to V sub A minus V sub C. What's interesting in the matrix here, the units on this first row are moles, 1 over ohms, and this is dimensionless. Uh, that's actually okay, as long as in our equation we're consistent with our units. So I could use Kramer's rule to solve for V sub A and V sub C. I'll bring this column over to the column associated with V sub C, and take the ratio of that determinant to this determinant. So 27 milli minus 9 milli divided by minus 3 milli minus 4 milli, and that turns out to be minus 2.57. I could do, again, the matrix ratio, but I have a very simple relationship that 9 is equal to V sub A minus V sub C, so I'm just going to use that directly here, and then solve for V sub A as 6.43. So that's one way we can solve a problem with an additional floating voltage source, or multiple ones, is to assign an unknown current to that. But that means we have to write a set of equations and then to eliminate them. There's actually a simpler way to do this, or another technique. It's called the supernode method. What we're going to do is create one really big node. The current that enters a circuit has to leave a circuit. So if you think of this as a piece of a circuit, whatever enters this would have to leave it. That was really what we're doing with I1. So if you just do Kirchhoff's laws at this supernode, we could just write one equation in our last unknowns. I assign current here in any direction, but let's just take uh, the things that enter this supernode and then set it equal to whatever leaves the supernode. But we also have the supernode, the constraint of V sub A minus V sub C being 9 volts. Doing our algorithm again where the current's entering node equals the current that leave the node. So what's entering here would be this current, which would be 3 volts minus V sub A divided by 1,000. 
I also have this current entering the node. Again, you can pick these in any direction you wanted to. Just kind of mix them up here. And so I've got three volts minus V sub C divided by one half of a K or times two milli. And then the currents that are leaving the node would be this current, which would be V sub A divided by half a K or times two milli. And then the same thing also over here with V sub C. So let's multiply all this out in group terms here. So I've got three times one milli and I've got three times two milli. So that gives me six plus three or nine. And I've got minus one milli times V sub A and then I've got minus two milli times V sub C. I got this from my currents leaving the node. Okay, now let's bring this on the other side of the equation. So I'll have three milli times V sub A, and then I'll have four milli times V sub C. This is the same equation we had on the last page where we had solved for I1 with writing two equations and setting them equal to each other. We've effectively done that with a super node. And so this is how you can solve for circuit node voltages with a floating voltage source without a series resistance.